Who said that you have to use a feature the way it was supposed to be used? Well, today I'm going to share with you one slider that you can use to create a soft, beautiful, painterly effect. And guess what? That slider was not created to do anything like this at all. But it works. And that's all we need to know. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back at it again in the wonderful world of Photoshop. And if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you already know what to do. Check the links in the description. Now select the background layer and then press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of it. Now we can apply a filter to this. But before we do anything, let's go to filter and then convert for smart filters and hit OK so that we can change the values of that filter later. Now the filter is this and this is the trick. Go to filter and then camera raw filter. So let's go to the detail tab. On top, we have sharpening. If you add sharpening, it's gonna add some noise. Now at the bottom, we have noise reduction for that. You can use this slider to reduce noise, but also at the same time, what is noise? Noise is a kind of texture, right? So if you reduce the texture, what's gonna give? The painterly effect. So if you go extreme on this one, have a look at what it does. Instantly, amazing painterly effect. Here's the before, and this one is the after. Just look at it. Now you can control the amount. So I'm gonna go 100% on this one just to show you the difference between that. And luminance detail, if you increase it all the way up, it will bring back all the details. So if you decrease it slowly and gradually, it will start to take away the details. So look closely only at the skin for this moment. So for this example, for the skin, I guess this value looks fine. And hit OK. For the other areas, we will have other values. Now once that is done, we can get the details back in the eyes and maybe the mouth if you want to. So let's create a mask. By the way, you can name this painterly level one or just painterly one, that's fine. Now click on the mask button right there. Now take the brush black as the foreground color and paint on the areas where you want the details back. So in this case, I'm gonna paint on in here, increase the flow and opacity to 100 and let's get the details back. That's kind of too much though. So I'll just press X to make the foreground color white again and then delete the details from some of these areas like that. Now we don't want the mask to be so active. So here is what we do. We click on the mask. We then click on the properties and you can decrease the density of the mask. If you cannot see the properties, you can always go to window and then make sure properties is checked. Now for this one, I'm going to keep it at about something like 35 works for us. Now we also have the details on the eyes and the mouth and we also have the painterly effect. And guess what? We can add some more values to other areas as well. So with painterly one selected, you can make a copy of it. Press Control or Command J. Now in this copy, you can double click on the camera raw and change the values. And that was the whole point in converting it to a smart object by going to filter and convert for smart filter. Now let's increase the values even more. If we go back to the details tab right in there and we can actually just zoom in and increase the values even more or in other words, lose the details. So decrease the luminance details. So I'm going to keep it at about that and hit OK. Now I want to take it away from the face. I don't want face to have so less details. So select the mask again, take the brush and black as the foreground color. And this creates a wonderful effect. Now in this case as well, you can of course increase the density. There we have it. Now if you want, let's make one more copy of it just for the background. So with this painterly one selected, you can name this painterly two. This is level two. Make a copy, control or command J. And in this one, double click on the camera filter again, and we're gonna reduce the details even more. Let's go to the details tab. And inside of that luminance detail, let's go crazy on this one to all time low and hit okay. This is looking fantastic, but there are some areas where we are losing details. Have a look at the top of the subject's head. We don't want that to happen. So select the mask, the same thing, take the brush, black as the foreground color and paint it away from the subject. We want the subject to have some details, some sort. There we have it. This is wonderful. Now what you can do, you can name this painterly three and we will add some filters to it as well. Now let's make a group of all of these softening layers. So with the first one selected, hold the shift key and then select the last one, the painterly one. All of them in the middle are being selected at this moment. Then press control or command G to make a group of all of them. And we can name this softening or painterly softening, whatever you want. Now, one of the things which are trending these days are sun flares. Everybody's adding them. So why shouldn't we do that? Let's do it. So let's add a gradient. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then let's choose gradient. Now inside of that, 
let's choose a color from white to yellow or yellow to red whatever type of sun flare you want to add so single click on this one on the left hand side i'm going to choose let's choose bright yellow so let's select yellow and let's choose something bright like that okay and on the right hand side single click on this one single click on the color and we're going to choose something orange-ish well that is looking fantastic hit ok and hit ok again change the style from linear to radio so that it's radio radio means something that has radius which means circle so now we can move it anywhere we want you're going to move it at the top and guess what you can also control the size of it by using the scale right here so if you increase the scale the size increases if you decrease the scale the size decreases but this one we can go for 140 let's go for 160 why not hit ok now we want to make sure that the flare always brightens stuff now what was the blend mode which brightens stuff screen right screen brightens multiply darkens and overlay adds contrast soft light adds a little bit of contrast just a recap so now let's change the blend mode from normal to screen now you can always go back and change the colors if you want to you can double click on this one single click on this one i'm going to click here and change the color let's make it a little more colorful increase the saturation a little bit uh, this is fine maybe let's make it a little more reddish there we go and orange as well let's make it a little more reddish in here that's looking fantastic hit okay that's fine but we want a little more dimension on the sun flare what do we do make a copy of it with this one selected which is gradient fill one press ctrl or command j to make a copy let's decrease the size of this because we want the intensity to be higher in the middle so single click on this one and set the scale to maybe 120 or something and you can move it even top something like this or maybe 110 or 100 so i'm going to move it right there there we have the sun flare done now when you're dealing with a lot of flares do not forget the organization because later if you want to adjust it you're going to get confused so let's select both of these layers so select the first one hold the control or command key and then select the second one and then press control or command g and let's name it sun flare great now you can of course decrease or increase the opacity so i'm going to keep the opacity 85 84 that's great now it's time for us to add my favorite adjustment layer, and that is curves because if you master curves you can do anything in photoshop you can match the composites you can do color grading curves has a lot of applications dodging and burning it's like an all-rounder so click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves now first of all let's start with darkening the shadows because i think there's too much brightness in the shadows so i'm going to take the slider to the right like that wow it's already looking fantastic now we have darkened the shadows but we still want to create a faded effect what do we do now once you have taken the slider to the right you can always take it up in the same from the same position to create a faded effect something like this it's also faded but it's also darkening the shadows at the same time now let's decrease the highlights a touch just a touch it's kind of too much at this moment and maybe create something like this wow just a simple move here's the before here's the after creates a wonderful effect now if you want to increase color what would you do the first thing that comes to our mind is increasing the saturation but saturation treats every pixel equally so even if a pixel has very less amount of color it will boost its color and it won't look right so click on the adjustment layer icon and let's choose vibrance and then inside of that let's increase the vibrance to about let's go higher about 44 45 is fine have a look here's the before here's the after now we are talking now let's do some color grading and for color grading as well my favorite tool is curves so adds one more curves on top of it now you can top it off with as many curves as you want now let's click on the adjustment layer icon and let's choose curves in the shadows let's have some blues so let's go to the blue channel and increase the blues in the shadows like that or maybe let's just go from here just a touch and in the highlights i want some yellows now yellow is the opposite of blue right so if i decrease the blue i will get yellows so let's decrease the blues in the highlights just a touch not so much here's the before here's the after just a touch of blue here right now i feel we should add some magenta in the shadows as well so let's go to the green channel there is no magenta but there is green and the opposite of green is magenta rgb is the opposite of cmy keep in mind red opposite of cyan green opposite of magenta blue opposite of yellow so let's move to green and keep the green constant in the highlights and in the shadows let's decrease it add some magenta just a touch of magenta right now let's move to the red channel 
Now, as you can see, there's too much red in the shadows, but we don't want to remove the reds from the skin tones as well. So what do we do? With the help of the hand tool right there, select the hand. That's not exactly the hand tool, but that's the hand inside the curves. You're going to make a point right there. Just click on in there. So it makes sure that that area is constant. And now for the shadows, just decrease the reds like that. And just by doing it, you see the effect in there? It's creating a massive and wonderful effect. Have a look at it. Isn't that wonderful? So here's the before, here's the after. I absolutely love it. Now let's create a faded effect here as well. So let's go to the RGB channel and take up the shadows like that and add some dimension to it by adding a point on the left and take it down like curve, like that. Before, after. Now to add some more dimension, let's do a tiny bit of dodging. We don't need burning in this case, but let's do some dodging. Now keep in mind, dodging is brightening, burning is darkening. And you can do this with curves again. So click on the adjustment icon and then choose curves. Now you need to take it up just like that. Let's take it up a little bit. Now select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Now zoom in. Now take the brush with the foreground color white and you can decrease the flow to somewhere about, let's go for 2% or 3%, something like that. Now let's paint on the bright areas or where the light is falling. So the light is falling from the top. So let's brighten up the highlight areas to add some mood and dimension to it. Now you can take your time to do this. I'm going to decrease the flow to 1%. Let's go for 2% flow. See, have a look. Here's the before, here's the after. It's adding some dimension. Guys, I'm doing it really, really fast. You can take all the time in the world to do this. Now let's brighten her hand as well. Wherever the light is falling from the top. Maybe this area a little bit. Maybe her shoulders. Something like this. Now let's have a look. Here's the before, here's the after. Just a teeny tiny bit of light I thought might be helpful. Now the light is bringing up a little bit of blues in the shadows as well. That might be the reason of color grading here. So we can try putting this layer under the previous the curves adjustment layer and it solves the issue. And that is why it's important to name the layers. Let's name this dodging and let's name this one color grading or just grade, grade one. Now it's time for the fun and easy stuff and that is color lookup tables. You can add as many color lookup tables as you want. So let's click on the adjustment icon and choose color lookup. And for this example, crisp warm would fit the best. So from the first drop down menu, let's go ahead and choose crisp warm. You can choose whatever you like. I like crisp warm on this one. So it adds a little warmth to it. So here's the before, here's the after, but it's also making the shadows very dark and we don't want it at the bottom of the image. So what do we do? We select the mask and then we choose the gradient tool from white to black, let's create a gradient from top to bottom so that it only affects the top part of the image. Now let's try making a better gradient. I like this one. This is fantastic. Now I also don't want it to affect the shadows. So what do we do? We double click on the right hand side of the adjustment layer. This brings up the layer styles dialog box. If you want anything to be taken away from the shadows, you take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. But that is very harsh, right? So hold the Alt or Option. Click on the slider to break it apart and take it all the way to the right and left inside. Now hit OK. Now it's only affecting the bright areas. It's looking wonderful, but it's also adding some highlights on the skin, which we don't want. This is not looking very good. So we select the mask, take the brush, black as the foreground color, and then we take it away from the skin. You can increase the flow to about 40% or let's go for 30% and let's take it away from the face to get back the skin tones, right? There we go. This is looking great. Maybe I'm going to go back and take it, paint it here as well. Let's decrease the flow to 20%. Just a touch. All right, there we go. Now let's go crazy on this one. Let's add one more color lookup table. Click on the adjustment layer icon again and then choose color lookup. And this time, let's add a sunset kind of effect. So click on the drop down menu and let's choose late sunset. But that's kind of too much. No worries. Let's decrease the opacity. Let's choose somewhere around, let's go for 34%. Have a look at it. Here's the before, here's the after, creating an amazing effect. But at the face, it's creating some discrepancies which we don't want. So select the mask and brush selected black as the foreground color. Flow at 20%, that's fine. And then just start painting on the face and take it away from the areas where you don't want it. That's it. That was, it was that simple. 
So without the mask, with the mask. You see, it's brightening the face and taking our attention to the subject. Now what you can also do, you can paint on the complete face and then you can lighten the mask as well. There's a feature to do that in Photoshop. And the way you do that is you select the mask and then you open up the properties. All right, if you cannot see the properties again, go to window and then make sure properties is checked. And then you can decrease the density of the mask. Slowly and gradually increase it. So I'm gonna keep it at about 67 or something like that. Now to add more warmth, I know this is insane, but let's go ahead and add one more color lookup adjustment layer. And this time let's choose edgy amber. It adds wonderful warmth to it. It's kind of too much. Let's decrease the opacity. Let's keep it at about 9%, that's wonderful. Here's the before, here's the after, just a touch of it. Maybe let's go for 6% and we are good to go. Now this last step is optional. If you want to add some texture to it, you can do that as well. So let me go to my file explorer or finder and I'm gonna drag it and drop it into Photoshop on top of her, top of the canvas, something like this. And let's change the opacity, sorry, blend mode to overlay and opacity to about 70% or something like that not too high. Let's go for 60 or something like that. But there are a couple cracks which we don't want. So what do we do? So let's remove the cracks. We are not liking it anyway. So let's change it to normal so that we can see the cracks properly, increase the opacity, and then we'll apply it again after we remove the cracks. Now this is a smart object. So we need to right click on it and choose rasterize layer. And now let's go ahead and remove all these cracks. So let's select the healing brush tool, the regular healing brush tool hold the Alt or Option, take a sample, and then just paint on the cracks to remove them. You don't have to be super accurate about it because it's anyway gonna be applied as a texture. No big deal in here. Super simple to do. All right, that looks wonderful. At the side, maybe we wanna remove all these. This is great. Let's remove all these lines as well. Okay, now once you're ready, once you are, once you think it's all right, then you can go ahead and change the blend mode back to overlay from normal to overlay and change this opacity to whatever number you like. For this example, I'm gonna choose maybe 56 or something like that. And let's remove this from the subject's face by clicking on the mask button, take the brush, blank as the foreground color, flow 20% is fine. Let's keep painting on her face. Maybe let's go for 5% flow. You want a little bit anyway. So let's paint it properly, paint it here and there as well. And there you have a nice texture. You can of course control the opacity if you want to increase the texture amount. Let's go for 65% and we are ready to go. Of course the texture is optional. Without texture it also looks wonderful. With texture it looks like a different style. I like that as well. So whatever you choose, you can go for it. So here is the before, let me show you. Here's the before. And here is the after, a wonderful painterly effect. So that's how you create a painterly effect. And the basis of that was just one slider. What was that slider? Luminance. And also there was one more, but in the same section. So one section we can say luminance detail. And that was it. It was supposed to remove noise but we can definitely use it for other purposes as well. So just keep in mind, you need to break free in Photoshop. If there's certain tools or features meant to do a certain particular things, you can try it for anything else you want. Just press all the buttons, play with all the menus, try everything. And if you get lost, you can always reset Photoshop. And there's a tutorial on that in this channel as well. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. Thank you so much for watching this and I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix and Perfect free for everybody forever. Thanks for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.